I'm Birgit O'Connor and welcome to the Bolinas Mesa. It's spring here and all the wild iris are in bloom. So this gives me the perfect opportunity to try to show you how to create the veins within a flower. Now these techniques can be applied to any type of iris or any other kind of flower that does have veins in it. We'll go back to the studio where we're going to be working on the demonstration and you'll see how much pigment to apply to a drying surface. So let's go back to the studio and have some fun. When you're holding your brush, place your hand higher up the shaft. This way it'll be a little looser and the appearance will be a little freer. I'm going to be using my line drawing as my guide, but I'm really not too concerned if I stay right on it. I know that some artists really don't like to see any pencil lines, but for myself, I feel that's part of the painting. You are going to have to move fairly quickly, otherwise your surface is going to dry faster than you can work. Notice how your color is spreading and drying. You may have to reapply some veins. The most important thing is to have fun and see what feels right to you. It's not about being extremely accurate. For a more natural appearance, I'm just going to add a few little dabs of color. Remember, some colors will want to move more than others. To change that, all you have to do is lift your paper up and roll it around. Here you can see how the color is moved and how it's created a blended effect. Notice how I'm working each individual petal and every section has one layer of water and pigment. Right now it's about working the overall painting. I haven't yet worked on layers. Remember, if I want a richer intensity of color, I'm going to use less water and more pigment. Here again, I'm going to use the larger brushes for the bigger shapes and the smaller ones for the finer areas. I'd like you to notice the overall tone of the painting and how all the values seem to be fairly similar. The only difference is the dramatic dark shadows. Right now I have the potential of a very strong flower and a very weak background. I'll be able to change all of this with dry brush techniques and layers of color. The brush I'll be using for this color application is my Cosmotop Sable Synthetic Blend. If you use a nylon or inexpensive brush, you have the potential of picking up the color underneath when you're reapplying your layers. Then you won't have a smooth appearance. You'll have the effect of brush strokes. It'll also really depend on how dry your paper surface is when you reapply the water. You can now see by adding the second layer of color to the background, it's helping to make it more dramatic. 